right guys, so today we're going to be finding top dead center. Now this is the exact top dead center. We're going to be using a the valve drop method, which basically means we're going to be dropping a valve into the piston. Sounds scary, sounds very dangerous, but it really isn't, as long as we don't start the truck during the procedure. Um, if you just need to find approximate to top dead center for like setting the valve lash or uh, installing valve springs or valve seals, whatnot, you don't really need to use this method. You can just look for valve overlap, and I'll point that out here in a bit. Um, for this, though, we're going to be using this method so that we can put a mark on a damper so whenever we set timing, we know exact top dead center so we can set timing very accurately. You can use the pin below the injector pump, but that's not necessarily very accurate. Uh, it can be with off within a couple degrees, and even uh, not just uh, off a couple degrees, but also not very repeatable. So. Um, for something like timing, where you really want to be able to adjust it within in one degree increments, um, using this method to find exact top sense center is preferred and recommended. Well, before we get to it, we've got to understand what exactly we're going to be doing. Like I said, it's the valve drop method. We're going to be dropping one of the valves down, and so that way when the piston comes up, it'll touch the valve. Now, due to the way the crank uh, works, because it actually the piston actually stays at the very top, for a couple of degrees, so we can't just hit it once because we could be off by a couple of degrees, which would skew our numbers, which would skew the timing we set it at, and so it's just not a very good thing. So what we're gonna do that instead, is we're gonna drop the valve a little further down. So as the piston comes up to top dead center, and then before it hits top dead center, approximately 15 degrees or so before top dead center, it hits that valve, we can measure that, we're using a dial indicator, measure, okay, say, okay, the, the piston hit the valve, stop, mark the damper, and then lift the valve up, go with the piston on the other side of the top dead center, put the valve back down to the same measurement, and then do it again, and measure once the uh, piston hits the valve, and stop there and mark the damper again. What that does is it gives you two marks on either side of top dead center. And so what you do is you take a, a measure, take your measurement, and measure the exact center. And then that between those two, the measurement between those two marks, the center, is exact top dead center, which really super simple, really, really easy once you uh, understand the process, so let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is remove the number one valve cover. To do that, it's just a 15 millimeter bolt, and then the valve cover lifts right off, and we can put that to the side. Now, using a 7 8 inch ratchet, we're gonna put it on the alternator pulley and rotate the engine, and watch for valve overlap. Valve overlap is essentially what it sounds like. One valve is just starting to close while the other one is starting to open. So there's a brief period where both valves are actually open. One thing to note when you're spinning the engine over with the alternator pulley is that you can only spin it the engine backwards. If you try to spin it forwards, the uh, pulley will just slip due to the tensioner. You can see now that the intake valve here is starting to open. So once it's starting to close, you'll know that the exhaust valve will be opening, which is valve overlap. If you have a manual transmission, you want to make sure it's out of gear, otherwise uh, you'll be trying to move the truck as you do this. So here you can see it's starting to close, and that one will start to open. Once that one moves, we want to stop rotating the engine. There we go. Right there. That is valve overlap. So now what you need to do is you need to make a mark on the damper. This doesn't have to be exact, just anywhere about right here will work. You can see that I've already marked top head center on this engine, so we're going to use that mark. Now looking at the mark, what we'll do is we will rotate the engine over 360 degrees. You can do this with the alternator or with a 15 millimeter on the crank bolts. Now you're going to stop before you hit the top dead center mark. You're going to want to have the mark a couple inches from your pointer. Now what we're going to do is install the dial indicator. Now if you have the magnetic mount for your dial indicator, or more specifically one from Harbor Freight, it has an M8 thread pitch here, which allows us to just thread it right in to the top of this rocker pedestal, which is really stinking handy. So now what we'll just do is we'll just put the dial indicator on, and we'll put it on the flat tappet bit of the spring retainer. That allows us to have a nice accurate reading. If we put it on the top here, that the unlevel surface will skew our readings. 
So we're going to put it on and then clamp it down. So now we're going to loosen up this lock nut here and then rotate the adjustment three turns and that's three turns going down. We're going to tighten up the adjustment three turns. What that allows us to do is that compresses the valve so that way the piston can make contact with it. So that's one turn, two turns, three turns, just approximate. Now we dial, we, we zero out the dial indicator. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cheat and use the barring tool, but you can use uh, either the crank or the alternator pulley, though like I say, you can only rotate the alternator pulley uh, the engine backwards. So because we're going to be doing this forwards, you need to use the crank or we just got this barring tool for fine adjustment. And that allows me to be up on top of the engine while watching the dial indicator. So now we're just going to rotate the engine and wait for that dial indicator to move off of the zero mark. We want approximately four or five thousandths of deflection. And if you want to make sure you're rotating the engine the correct way, you can just look at the scoop on the fan. Um, as we rotate the engine, you can watch it, and if it's pulling the air in, that means we're going the right way or forward, and if we're pushing the air out, then it's pushing, we're rotating the engine backwards. So we're just going to go slowly here so we don't overshoot. Right there. So now we're going to go backwards and make sure everything's good. We're going to zero out that app, pretty zeroed out, and we're going to go into a certain amount of deflection. Right there, we got approximately about four degrees of deflection. So now we're going to go underneath and mark the damper. Now, to do this, we're just going to make a mark where the pointer points at the damper. Now, I'm using this really fat marker here, reason being is it's non-permanent as I already have my top dead center found, but you'll want to use a nice and fine marker so you can be really exact. And like I say, I'm not really that worried about it, so we're going to go just approximately like that. There we have it. Now we're going to go up above and get our second mark. So now we're going to loosen off our adjustment again. It's about three turns, which allows the piston to come past so we can go for the other side. Make sure to remember what the exact numbers here on the dial indicator. That way you can set it to the same value again, which is very important. And do not bump the dial indicator because you could throw off the readings. Now we're going to rotate the engine past our approximate top dead center mark by at least the amount between these two marks here. There, we approximately double it, which is about right. So now we're going to remove the wrench and go up top again. Now we are going to drop down the valve again and make sure that we are at the same mark that we were before. Now when you do this, you're going to want to make sure you tighten up to the point uh, where your dial indicator reads zero. So if you go past it, you want to loosen up past zero and then come back up to it. Otherwise you can have inaccurate results. So we're going to go past it and then back up to it. There we are. So now using the barring tool again, we're going to rotate the engine backwards until we get the same four thousandths of deflection. Now you can see while rotating the engine that it has become unzeroed, so we're just going to uh, go past it again and zero it back in. There you go. There. 
There we are. Now we got our deflection. We're going to go forwards again just to make sure it goes back to zero, which it does. So we're going to go to the 4,000th deflection again and make another mark on the damper. There we have it, 4,000th of deflection, make another mark on the damper. Like I say, I'm not trying to be super precise here. There you have it, there's your two marks. Now you just measure in the center, and that is your exact top dead center. You can see that the old mark I had when I, I made that mark, when I had the engine uh, cylinder head off, and so I just had the dial indicator straight on the piston, so I was able to get really accurate results. It is exactly in the center there. So this is a very accurate method and should get you within at least half of a degree at the minimum. If you're trying to get that accurate uh, when you're setting the timing, um, it really doesn't matter due to variances in the pump and uh, pot pressure and different timing is RPM changes. The main thing you want when you're setting a timing is consistency and that is what this method does. Because once you have a mark on the damper, just make sure that your engine is rotated rotated to that mark on the damper each time and it'll be extremely consistent so there you are i hope you enjoyed next make sure when you um you get done with this you got your number make sure to set the valve lash on the exhaust valve again very important while you're at it might as well go around just setting them all if you haven't done it recently so hope that helped thanks for watching and uh keep wrenching